And we're watching the next storm system cross through the state of Utah. What can you expect? Find out with your complete forecast coming up. But in the just winds are still howling out there. 32 miles per hour out at the airport, 22 in Cedar City, 18 down in St. George. And these are the gusts, 43 mile per hour gusts out at the airport, 28 in Cedar City, 26 in St. George, and 30. And it was a decent low. enough day today, but the clouds have rolled in and taken away our sunshine. And it doesn't look as if we're going to see much sunshine over the next several days. Another system is moving on to the West Coast and will affect us with windy conditions, rain as well. We'll give you all the details in your complete weekend forecast coming up next. This is an ABC 4 Warn Weather Alert. Hi, everybody. We have a couple of alerts, winter alerts to share with you. Let's take you to the maps. There we go. We have a winter storm warning in place for the pink shaded areas until 6 o'clock on Tuesday. The purple shaded areas, the Uinta Mountains down into the South Central Mountains, will see a winter weather advisory in place until 6 o'clock on Tuesday as well. There is a wind advisory in place for the yellow shaded counties there. We have high winds as well throughout the afternoon into the evening hours, and that's until 6 p.m. tonight. The radar, Storm Tracker Doppler radar, snow showers out to the west. This is all moving up to the northeast, so north of town, probably going to see an inch or two of snow. We'll give you all the details on what you can expect out of this latest wintry blast here in just a couple. So of Storm Tracker Doppler radar. We do have snow shower activity in northern Utah, of course, pinwheeling around this center of low, all pushing off to the northeast, and we can actually show you where this is tracking toward. This is the next two hours. See this next two hours pushing off to the northeast. That's where we expect the snow showers to be. But you can see more moisture down to the southwest. Very impressive. In fact, we have our own Joe Chevy Chevalier. He's up on the roof right now. Chevy, tell us what it's looking like out there. I bet you you're getting, oh yeah, there you go. You look like a Christmas tree, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. This is exactly what we expected. A lot of rain during the day, then a quick changeover to snow. And I'll tell you what the big snowflakes are doing. It's changed uh, just about all over to snow. It's reducing visibility quite a bit. You can see the traffic behind me on I-215. It's slowed down, so allow yourself some extra time. Visibilities are down, and we're just now starting to accumulate on the roadways definitely accumulating on the rooftop here and on the grassy areas so let's take a look at the advisories watches and warnings for the valley areas there's a winter weather advisory in place until four o'clock tomorrow morning and a winter storm warning in place for the benches and above up into the mountains until 4 a.m. tomorrow morning as well. So your commute might be a little, little tricky as you go uh, into higher into el the elevations. Let's take a look at what we're expecting. One to three inches on the valley floors, three to six inches up into the benches, and another foot plus in some areas up in the mountains. That's what it looks like out here. Roland, back to you for the rest of what we can expect. All right, buddy, that traffic looks pretty impressive behind you. Thank you very much for that live yes. Better than dropping turkeys from a helicopter, right? You remember that? That old <laughs> yeah. WKRP sketch back in the day? You know? but anyhow, it turned out too well for them. No, it, it didn't. No, this experiment turned out a lot better for those guys. Yeah, hey, hold on to your hats. It's going to be windy around yeah. here. Even tonight, it's we're in the teens with the wind speeds, oh. wind gusts over 20 miles per hour. Let's take a look outside at the holiday uh, weather webcam, and you can see uh, cloudy conditions today. It's a decent enough day today. Temperatures are fairly mild in the mid and upper 50s, but we'd have the cloud coverage, and we're going to continue to see the cloud coverage uh, probably through tonight. There may be some breaks here and there, but I expect mostly cloudy conditions for the entire weekend, but I think the rain holds off until late in the day tomorrow, but definitely through Sunday and into Monday, we have a chance for rain. It is gorgeous, though, down in the southern half of the state. I'll show you the satellite image here in a second. Zion National Park, crystal blue skies and lots of sunshine. Just a wonderful day uh, all along Dixie, and they deserve it because they had the rain over the last couple of days with that front stalling uh, just off to the south. So here's Storm Tracker Doppler radar. It is dry across the Beehive State and across the Salt Lake City Valley. These are just a couple of false echoes. Don't worry about that. And we expect it to stay dry, as I mentioned, until probably late in the day tomorrow and definitely through Sunday there's a chance for rain because we're in between a couple of systems here. Here's that front that's pushed off mostly to the east and to the southeast. Windy conditions, especially in western portions of Utah over into Nevada ahead of this next system uh, that's coming up onto the coast right now and into Nevada. So although the rains hold off, we are going to see windy conditions. How much wind? Well, how about 30 mile per hour winds sustained and maybe 40, 50, even 60 mile per hour gusts up on the higher peaks, even higher wind gusts than that. So as a result, the National Weather Service has issued a high wind warning and this is in effect until 8 o'clock tomorrow night. So through the night tonight, through the morning and the afternoon tomorrow, we're going to see uh, high wind 
wind speed. So it's 18 miles per hour now out of the Salt Lake City Airport down in St. George, 14, 16 at Cedar City. These are sustained winds and 23 mile per hour gusts out at the airport, 18 for the folks down in St. George, Cedar City, 33 mile per hour winds. They average those over, over I think, a 10 minute period to get those gusts. Temperatures, though, are comfortable. A little above average for this time of the year. It's 56 degrees right now in Salt Lake. It is 47 up in Logan, 60 in Cedar City. The wind gauge is reading down in St. George, but the temperature isn't. It's in the mid 60s down in St. George and in Lake Powell. Here is Futurecast. We'll put this into motion. Breezy conditions ahead of this front. And as the front gets closer, notice this is tomorrow morning into the afternoon hours, the wind speeds will pick up. And we, as I mentioned, uh, not out of the question to see 60, even 70 mile per hour gusts especially up in the higher elevation and when you get the funneling effects that's for sure how about the next seven days for the cash valley mid 50s tomorrow your weekend doesn't look that bad except for the cloudy conditions and for park city you're going to see a chance for showers rain and snow because temperatures of course below the freezing point in the mornings and only into the mid 40s as we get into the afternoon hours the a basin temperatures in the mid 50s throughout the weekend but it is dry for those folks in cedar city a chance for rain maybe some early snow showers on sunday morning 58 degrees for your saturday though and for st george 70 degrees windy conditions it's mostly Western Utah is going to see the most winds, and that's where the high wind warning I showed you was. Mid-50s for the Wasatch Front and a ch better chance for rain on your Sunday. All right. Mm. Thank you, Joe. Sure. New at 10 after last weekend's avalanche fatality. There's obviously still quite a bit of risk for those venturing into the higher elevations. With more snow on the way, those people are going to lose a valuable Utah resource this weekend. The Avalanche Center, meteorologist Joe Chevalier has the details. So with the Avalanche Center closing soon, there's only one problem. With high snowpack totals still in place and more storms on the way, there's still a considerable avalanche risk. Our last avalanche advisor will be Sunday, so the last one for the season. Avalanche Center Director Bruce Tremper says that when the center closes this weekend, backcountry goers won't be able to get information on avalanche watches and warnings. So one of the first questions that comes to mind is, why would they stop issuing advisories if more snow means an avalanche risk? Well, the piggy bank has uh, run out of money, so we're just like everybody else. We have a certain set amount of, amount of money, and we have to budget it, and uh, around April is when it runs out. But just because the advisories won't be issued, that doesn't mean the Avalanche Center still doesn't provide useful information. Tremper says that information is just a click away on their website. We have just uh, probably 100 different links there where people can check their own weather forecasts. In addition to weather forecasts, the website has dozens of current condition reports sent in from snowmobilers, snowboarders, and skiers who venture out. You can find the link in the orange box.